Welcome back everybody. Today is my 42nd update video. If you haven't seen the previous 41 in this series, this is where I go back to 10 past product reviews in order. Take a look back at the original reviews and let you know if anything changed since the cameras went off because I do continue to use a lot of these products after my review is completed. The reviews covered in this particular update are May and June of 2022. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 42. My 411th product review was the Emerald Forever Pan, which I saw on infomercial making some pretty bold claims. I put it to the test and some of those claims didn't really pan out. Check it out. The infomercial states that this will not scratch. They also say it will not chip, dent, peel, or warp. Oh, it, oh it is. Oh, it is coming off the bottom easily, very easily. All right, so first test. Boom, very nice, look at that. Looks great. One, oh, there it goes, there it goes. I did not have to use the spatula, very nice. And once again, no oil in there, so this is all just with the pan itself. Ah, yes, nice sizzle, nice sizzle. It slides around nicely, that's good. Oh yeah, look at this, beautiful. I should say the handle is not, actually not, it's not hot. Look at that, very even. I I'm, like the evenness of that grilled cheese sandwich. We're just trying to get these nice and dirty and see how they do. All right, time for the Ninja. Let's see how well it comes out here. Oh, that. We want to make sure we leave some in here because this is about the cleanup process. Now for the Emerald, let's see how that does. Well, about the same. All right, this has been sitting for quite a while now. You can see it's kind of discoloring from being so old. Let's see how it uh, scrapes out first. Oh, look at, this. look at the Ninja. Beautiful. Wow. I've had this for a year. I'm still impressed by it. Come on, Emerald. You got to come through in the clutch. Oh, yeah. No problem with this. Emerald, no problem. The tomato sauce is boiling, so we're making progress. Wow, this is a brutal looking concoction here. Oh, wow. Whoa, and it's still sizzling. Durability test from the commercial where I use this mixture on the surface. Oh no, hold the phone, time out all the way around the edges from the mixer. Now, for those of you who say that's a dumb demonstration, I would never do that. Yeah, it might be dumb, but it's not my test, it's theirs. I was just gonna see if their advertising's accurate. And I would say based on that, it wasn't. So at that point I decided that I'm gonna return the pan and that's, I think it's on them to replace it because it did not hold up to what they advertise that it can do. So when I get a replacement pan, I'll continue to use it and then down the road, I will update you how it's holding up long term. All right, so after ruining the pan in that video, I did order a replacement and they sent it right away actually. And I told them what happened. The replacement I've actually taken care of and it's held up quite well. In fact, it's it's probably my go-to eight inch pan. As you can see, it's held up beautifully. It looks nice. And this is with very regular use. I use this all the time. So if you don't believe some of the crazy infomercial claims, it's actually a really good pan. Number 412 is a collection of taco gadgets that supposedly enhances your taco eating and making experience. Let's take a look back at how the original review went. This is the Mi Taco Stand Flat Bottom Crispy Shells. Is that worth 20 bucks for two of those? I don't know, 20 bucks? All right, so the way you're supposed to use this is you wrap your tortilla around the frame and then you add the clip on the bottom, just like that. And then you're uh, pretty much ready to go. Now hold it down for 15 seconds. I'm pushing down on it and now I have to let it go for another 30 seconds. All right, after 30 seconds, we're supposed to lay it on its side see how that bottom looks. Okay, the bottom looks good. All right, let's try the other side here. All right. That worked. That worked as well. You know, when things worked right the first time, I'm always impressed and it worked right the first time. All right, this is a taco holder set made of food grade stainless steel. You can do three or you can turn it over and do two. You can do either one. So the idea is you can either prepare your tacos and put them in here to serve or you can put them in there and prepare them in here as well. Right, here we go. I'm just gonna prepare a couple basic tacos. It's a pretty basic device, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do and quite efficiently. So I'm pretty happy with that. The Taco Tamer. It says easy taco slider, prevents shells from breaking. Hard shell taco utensil, great for soft shells and lettuce wraps too. Oh, it's a lot hanging over there. I mean, this is, this is kind of what I got. It actually holds it in place while you're eating. I do like that. A lot of times when you lay it down on the side, everything kind of flops around, the shell flops open, it's just a disaster. This prevents this disaster from happening. This is a disaster preventing taco holder. I've eaten this far down, now it's time to engage the dispenser. So I'm gonna slide it forward. 
kind of keep dispensing this. I'm getting down to the end here. It's kind of fun. Probably it's unnecessary, but I'm glad I tried it out. It is a dinosaur with two slots in the back where you can stick a couple tacos. So will it hold this flat bottom taco I keep trying to pawn off and everybody? It won't, it will not hold this one. How about a large taco like this one? All right, so we've got a large taco and then let's try a small taco. That works pretty well too. It is a nice display. And they have a bunch of different dinosaur designs. There's a brontosaurus, a stegosaurus, they got multiple out there. They're not cheap, but they are kind of cute and I guess somewhat functional. Now, even though I've made tacos over the last year, I never really reached for any of these products. I didn't really feel a need to, to use them. They were fun to test out, but I didn't find any of them particularly useful long-term. Number 413 was an interesting pair of sunglasses called the Ampere Dusk. You can not only change the tint on these on the fly, but it also has an audio feature. Let's look back at how the original review went. These are billed as the world's first app-enabled electrochromic smart sunglasses. Unlike the buttons on the side that only have four, you can pretty much go anywhere in between. I'm sliding this as I go. Or you can just hit the button, boom, light, and dark. Man, it sure is bright out here. I wish my glasses were darker. Oh wait, maybe they are. This is the level one, level two, level three, Level four. There are more choices on the app, It's, but I do find that the four choices on the button are perfectly fine too. I should also point out that the app has a fine feature. It just sends a tone to the glasses. Here, here it is on this top right here. This is just a moment. We're buzzing your pair of... I guess you're not supposed to wear those when the tone goes off, but that's the tone. They're definitely not designed to, to buzz while you're wearing them. That was loud. This is the normal lightest tint they have. You can see it has a bit of an amber tint to it. Right, here's the next tent level. You can see how it kind of turns blue. It's kind of a bluish as opposed to amber. This is the third one, and then here is the darkest. Let's go through these again. Lightest, second tent level, third tent level, fourth tent level. The top is a little bit darker than the bottom. I'm not sure that's by design or an accident, but that's how it looks, which doesn't bother me at all, actually. I'm not sure they're extraordinary sunglasses, but they're perfectly functional. There's absolutely no base whatsoever. All right, so I've got some good news and bad news about the Ampere Dust. The good news is that I use these more and more over time, and I really came to like them quite a bit, although I never really used the audio feature after my review was completed. I did find the ability to change the tent on the fly to be kind of handy, especially as the conditions change. You can adjust your tent. Pretty cool. Now the bad news is that it came with a proprietary cable and a charging case. I had the cable in the charging case and I can't find it. And you can't just use any cable with these until I find that case is out of commission. I went online about seeing a replacement and the replacement case is a hundred bucks and it's out of stock. Number 414 was a collection of random kitchen gadgets. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. So this is the can colander. The way this is supposed to work is for tuna, it's supposed to go inside. Other cans, you're supposed to put it on the outside and then drain it that way. I guess we're supposed to kind of drain the, drain most of it out like this. And then you can literally press it and get even more out. Look at that. That definitely got all the, uh, all the juices out of there. Dump. And dump. You can use this for potatoes or vegetables. Oh, it looks nice. I think that, uh, that looks pretty good. Cutting it through this way, and then you're supposed to turn them on their side and cut them this way. Beautiful crinkle cut potatoes that I didn't spend much time on. I probably could have made them even better if I tried, but it doesn't really have a name. It just says it's a soup pour spout. So what we're supposed to do is just put this over the edge of the pot. Oh, it's pouring, it missed the bowl. Coming out of the uh, bottom, it's not even going where it's supposed to go. It's not even working properly all over the case of disaster. I think this is another failure. It's an ice cream scoop they call the ice po. All right, so it's going in there, not too bad. I'm just twisting it. Pull it out, that's what we, that's what we got. That's not quite what the picture shows. Now, the other question is what happens if you've already got ice cream taken out of there? How does that work? Let's find out. I'm not sure if this is really the way you're supposed to do it. And it's still in four parts though, but I was able to contain them within the cookie. Um, 
doesn't seem to work so well. I'm a big fan of Dream Farm, but this one I'm kind of struggling with. It is the Ice Gone. How about a couple of frozen hamburger patties? I'm gonna put one on the Ice Gone, one on the cutting board, and we'll start the stopwatch and see how it goes. All right, we're at the 10 minute mark. That's how long they say a burger will take to defrost. Let's check it out. I will say that this one feels more defrosted than this one. And you can see that quite a bit of that seems like it's, it's warmed up versus the cutting board, which is still pretty ice cold. It seemed like it was faster than the, than the cutting board, so I gotta give credit for that. All right, so the soup spout made my worst of 2022, so obviously I did not continue to use that one. I have used the can colander on occasion. Now this one elicits a lot of a response from people. Some people say it's really useless. Some people say it's quite useful. I've used it on and off to me. I'm kind of in the middle on this one. Number 415 was a wearable camera called the Pogo Cam. When I bought it, it was about 90% cheaper than when it was originally sold, which is not a very good sign for how good this works. But I put it to the test and here's how that went. So now what you're supposed to do, they have these little tiny loops right here. And these loops are supposed to go over the one of the arms of your glasses. Okay, I've got, I've got one on there. Now let's try for the second one. All right, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Is loop the safety loop over the end of your glasses so it won't fall off. And there we have it. And that's what we've got. So to turn it on, you hold down the rear button until you hear it beep. And then you have to wait six seconds before the camera is actually on. Okay, after the two beeps, then it's ready to record. Now in this first clip, I was in Hawaii. I was kind of panning around just to kind of get a first use of it to show my hands where it was hands free. Now, if you look at it right here, I'm pausing the action. You can see that it's certainly crooked and that's because the camera was just a little bit angled on the glasses. I couldn't even really tell. Uh, because it's so small, a little bit of an angle makes a big difference. You'll also notice that the quality of the video isn't very good. It looks almost like some video camera you bought from Kmart in 1990. It's about that level. It's not, it's, they say it's HD, it's not very good. Another thing to point out is when you look at the sky, there's a lot of banding in there. It's just a low quality image. There is audio on the camera. I did an audio test. Here's how that sounded. All right, how does this look? I'm at Waikiki Beach. Just doing a slow pan here. Does it sound okay? I'm not sure how it sounds. I haven't tested the audio yet. As bad as the audio and video are, the rest of the features of the camera are even worse. Uh, probably the worst thing is it can only hold six 30 second videos. There really isn't much of an indicator to let you know that it's full. It only stays on for 90 seconds at a time before it turns back off. It's also hard to put on your glasses evenly without everything being crooked. The fact that it has so many small parts, that's definitely a con. Just because you can put a camera on your glasses doesn't mean people want you to. All right, so I named this one number five on my worst of 2022, so obviously I did not continue to use this one. Maybe when it came out, it was kind of a novelty Piece, but nowadays it looks like a pretty bad idea that was poorly implemented. Number 416 was the Coolify 2 neck fan. Now this was interesting because it was 180 bucks. I wanted to see why it was so expensive and if it worked, and here's what happened. As you can see, the plates are very cold and the rest of it is actually kind of warm. Hold on through for a minute and look does not warm up. Now when it's in heating mode, now the plates are actually nice and warm. All right, time for the desert field test right here. I've got three different neck fans I'm gonna test out. All right, so the Arctic Air Freedom, it really just kind of pushes uh, air around. Next up, this one's a kind of a little bit older. The battery's kind of not so great on this anymore. Now this has fans that are adjustable that can kind of blow up toward your face, but I could already tell you that it's not comfortable. It's kind of moist. Now it's time for the start of the show here. Now right away, I like the way this one just hugs your neck. The other ones, they don't really hug. To me, the main feature are those two cooling plates in the side. They don't feel nearly as sticky, I guess just because of the material. Man, it's a lot more expensive, but it also is a lot better too. I really feel like from here up, it feels pretty comfortable. All right, it's also not nearly as loud uh, as the others were. These are kind of loud. But then when you compare it to the Coolify 2, you can see how much bigger of an area is cooled by them. Both sides of my neck going all the way around. It definitely provides a much bigger cooling area than the other neck fans. But if you're looking for the top of the line neck fan, the best on the market, this might be something to consider for your short list. On the other hand, it might be a matter of balancing between cost and between features. Now this is one of those products I appreciated more and more over time as I continued to use it. Not only is it a great neck fan, but a couple times I was sick with a fever. The cooling function felt great for that. 
A couple times I've had neck pain, I put the heat on and it worked well for that too. I've definitely used this one more than all my other neck fans combined. I think they have a Coolify 3 out now. I have not tested that one out yet though. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the Coolify 2 despite the high price tag. Number 417 was a comparison and test of two cut resistant gloves. I tried two different level of gloves and here's how that went. Today I'm testing out two different types of cut resistant gloves. These are level five and these are level nine. These are the no cry gloves. I paid $11.49 for them. They are currently a number one bestseller on Amazon. This is $48.99 for one glove. This offers the highest level of cut protection made of stainless steel mesh. It feels like you're about a knight going into battle here with this thing on. I really don't want to hurt myself in this video, so I've devised a way to avoid that. But let me just do the quick swipe test before I get started. With these chainmail gloves, honestly, I don't, I don't feel like that's very dangerous. I'm not sure this is that impressive because I think a lot of pair of gloves would prevent you from cutting yourself with this motion. This is a hot dog on a pencil because a hot dog has a layer of skin kind of like a human and then it has a layer of fat and then it has the pencil which is probably similar to a human bone size that's pretty good let's try this one i don't feel like the knife's ever going to go through that that's that's pretty solid so let me see what I'm, ta I'm chopping hi -ya. what happens if we do a hi -ya with the fake finger there <laughs> Gonna need some surgery. Oh, it stopped it. It definitely st it stopped it. Oh, that was, didn't even make a dent, nothing there. And it didn't, hey, it didn't, look at that, nothing. I'm literally peeling onto the finger. Nothing at all. These, these chain mail are no joke. If I go directly onto it, Oh, I did get a little bit of, oh, I got a little bit of fraying. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to saw with that, and then saw with that. Look at it. All it really did was discolor. It didn't really get through it too much. Once again, unscathed. These are much easier to wash just like regular gloves are. They're also lighter. They give you much more dexterity than, the, than these do. I can see why people would go for these over these, although these are pretty impressive, even with hot dogs in the fingers. Now I end up using the level fives more than level nines, even though the level nines were better because that chain mail has, is kind of difficult to clean and it also sometimes gets a smell to it. So even though the chain mail were better, I think long-term the level fives are a better fit for me. Number 418 was a collection of simple gadgets under 25 bucks, and here's how that went. The ASEAN TV product, the Pocket Chill. And you can see the mist is actually pretty good. It goes quite a ways. The left mist is a little bit stronger than the right mist. You know what's interesting? There's kind of this cone of, of projection. The fan covers the entire cone, and the mist is a little bit in the center. So on the edges of the fan, you don't feel the mist. It just feels like warm air. Even though the fan can last up to 12 hours, the water reservoir doesn't last very long. I was getting it about 12 minutes per use. This is not an ordinary clothes hanger. It is a lighted clothes hanger called the Hang Glow. Ah, we have light. That's the problem is these actually face a wall, so they're not gonna necessarily be activated, I guess, unless I turn it this way. Of course, the layout of your closet is gonna dictate how well this actually works. From Shark Tank, it is the Drop Stop. In fact, this one is actually personalized. They sent this to me with my logo on there. This says push all the way down to the bottom of the seatbelt catch. See, did, did any go through? None went through. None went through. They all stopped. And hiya! Definitely stopping the stuff that I drop. This is a, a container that not only allows you to store pizza without getting them stuck together, but also allows you to warm them up in the same container. Now the packaging says it can store one slice or an entire pizza. The way it's set up is you can just put one slice in there, which actually that slice has plenty of room, but let's expand this out all the way up and see how much we can fit in here. Start from the bottom and keep going. We got two slices, three slices, four slices. Am I gonna fit eight in there? Let's see. Nah, the lid's already hitting the top of it. Now I fit six slices in there. Now I think that's pretty fair because you're gonna, usually gonna buy a pizza and eat some of it first. We have these dividers that supposedly keeps the pizza from getting stuck. That's the big thing to me. So one slice, one divider. 
So we're just gonna kind of load this back up with a divider in between each one. All right, that's, uh, that is six slices of pizza. You know what, honestly, that's not, for six slices of pizza with dividers, I think that's a pretty good idea. Having a big pizza box in your fridge is kind of bulky. This one seems to alleviate that problem. I will say that I continue to use the pocket shell. I've been using it this summer. Uh, I put it on my desk, I put the kickstand up, and I have it blowing on me. I never even bother with the water because it doesn't last very long, but it's not too bad for kind of a light breeze. Now the hang low my son kind of took from me because his closet's kind of dark. He uses it every single day and the batteries lasted about 10 months in there, which doesn't seem that bad really. But he told me that he really likes it. He continues to use it every day. Number 419 is the Nuzzle Pillow, which is advertised as a zero gravity pillow using the same fabric as NASA spacesuits. How well did it work? Let's flash back to the original and see what happened. Let's take a look at these inner layers here. There's one inner layer, second inner layer. This outer layer has a cool feeling to it, which is kind of nice. From what I understand on their, on their website, there's a soft layer and a medium layer, and you can combine these however you'd like. Let's take these inserts here and try them out. I'm gonna try just the soft insert first. All right, here we go, soft insert. It's very soft, maybe too soft. I don't really feel like I'm even on a pillow. All right now, the medium insert is supposed to be more for back sleepers. You know, I don't really sleep my back very often, but if I did, this is probably a good thickness, I think. I'm kind of torn between the just the medium and the medium with the soft together. All right, my first night of sleep with the just the soft insert is out of the way. I actually felt more like I just had like a folded towel underneath me than a pillow. I'll stick my hands on here and see which one cools off the fastest because the nuzzle is supposed to be good at heat dissipation. Let's see how it compares to the Tempur-Pedic. There we go. Now you can see right now that both of them are looking about the same. Although it looks like, looks like the nuzzle is cooling down faster than the Tempur-Pedic is. All right, my second night with the nuzzle is behind me and my first night with the medium insert, I realized last night that I didn't really like the way the material of the outer cover feels for the nuzzle. It's a bit, it's a bit scratchy feeling. But with that said, I really did enjoy my night's sleep on the medium insert last night. Right now I prefer the medium, but we'll see how the medium plus the soft do. Decided that I like the medium better than the two inserts in here, although it was pretty close. Most people who buy this pillow will like it. Now I have literally dozens of pillows in my house and I would say the nuzzle is probably in what I'd call the B group. Not my everyday pillow, but I do use it on occasion and I even use it to sit on and prop myself up with and it's held up quite well. Here it is without a pillowcase. You can see there is there's no uh, significant issues with it. It doesn't seem like it's really lost its fluff. I would say I like this one better than I did a year ago. So it was probably in my top five pillows that I've reviewed over the years. Number 420 was a very interesting collection of bathroom gadgets. Let's flash back to my original review and see how that went. This is a camera shaped toilet paper dispenser. And that is already looking pretty cool. It's like a Polaroid camera sticking right out of the wall. So the double rolls do work, but it takes a little bit of um, finagling to get through there. And there we have it, pretty simple. That is that is pretty cool, I have to admit. You, uh, hold on to it, pull some toilet paper, no problem. It has five heads, press the button right here, and it turns on. And the eyes glow blue. Other models, they, they tend to show them holding it like this in their hands. I find that to be a bit awkward, so I end up holding it up at the top. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's like my face. You can see it kind of contours the head. It's really good for the back of the head, too. But this is a toilet brush that supposedly will spin dry. On their website they say it's dishwasher safe, which I, I can't imagine why you would want to put something like that in the dishwasher. Now it's all wet. Let's see what we got. All right, it's kind of hard to tell, but it is spraying the inside of the toilet a little bit. I mean, it seems pretty dry. When I move the container, you can just use that to pick it up. Kind of cool. I don't see any drippings in there, so that's, uh, that's good. There are, there are people out there that are real stickler for not touching things like this, so in that case, this might be a good idea. Supposedly, it can actually push down to the pump of a bottle and dispense that way. We'll align these two and lock it back in place. Oh, oh, we got some. We got some. Crank this all the way up and see what happens. Oh, wow, that's a lot of sanitizer. Very nice. All you have to do is spray this onto your toilet paper before use. It makes it flushable, it makes it like a wet wipe. Now we have this Nutella, very messy. Dry toilet paper. Ugh. All right, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. 
As far as I can tell, the pristine toilet paper spray does work. So I actually still use several of these. The Simply Dispense is in my bathroom. I've only had to change the batteries, I think, once in the last year. The camera toilet paper dispenser is still in the same spot. The only problem with that is it's kind of a pain if you have a full roll to replace it, so sometimes I just skip it. Now, the spin dry I still use. I don't think anybody wants me to show them an old toilet brush on the camera, but I did find it to be quite effective. All right, so that's it. I would say my favorites of this bunch would be the Emerald Pan, the Ampere Dusk, and probably my favorite would be the Coolify too. My least favorites would be the Soup Spout and the Pogo Cam because they both made my worst of 2022. But that's all I've got. I'll be back in about another month with my next update video. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.